What is Parkinson's disease dementia? In this episode, I will share the basics of Parkinson's disease dementia, how it's related to Lewy body dementia, and how it's different than Alzheimer's disease. Stay tuned to learn more. Welcome to This is Getting Old, Moving Towards an Age-Friendly World. I'm your host, Dr. Melissa Batchelor, and I am a nurse and a nurse practitioner, and I've been caring for older adults and their families for over 25 years. Before we dive into today's topic, I just wanted to share a few of the different ways that you can connect with me. First, you can subscribe to the podcast. If you haven't already done so, you can do that from whatever platform you're listening on today. And if you like the episode, please like it, leave a comment, or and share it with someone that you think it will be uh, beneficial for. You can also go to my website, melissabphd.com, and sign up to be part of my newsletter. And that's where I send out the latest news and information about happenings kind of in the aging space. And also we'll be sending out information about the new Agewise U membership library site that I will be launching in the end of March of this year. And that's where I'm taking all of the podcasts that I've done and organizing them by topic so that you don't have to try to scroll down through a gazillion thumbnails to find other podcasts that are related. You can also join my Facebook group. Um, this goes by the title of the podcast. This is getting old, moving towards an age-friendly world, and I look forward to seeing you there. So now let's dive into today's episode where we're talking about Parkinson's disease dementia. So first of all, what is Parkinson's? Let's talk a little bit about what's happening in the brain when a person develops Parkinson's disease. Most people who develop Parkinson's are over the age of 50. Parkinson's disease is a progressive disorder and it develops when the brain cells that produce dopamine stop working or die. And dopamine is a chemical in the brain that's involved in movement. So the condition is characterized by motor issues such as muscle stiffness, tremors, or balance problems. And as it advances and gets worse, it also can cause cognitive issues in about a half to three fourths of people. These cognitive issues are called Parkinson's disease dementia and they typically will begin about 10 years after the person has had trouble moving and is diagnosed with Parkinson's. So now let's talk about the relationship of Parkinson's disease to Lewy bodies. So Parkinson's disease is caused by abnormal protein deposits in the brain called Lewy bodies, which trigger a, a chemical changes that lead to dementia symptoms, such as difficulty concentrating or hallucinations. So people with Parkinson's dementia will have several different clinical features that a person with Lewy body dementia has, but a person with Parkinson's disease develops dementia after they have had these issues with movement compared to a person with Lewy body dementia who begins with the cognitive changes, and then later they develop um, the motor issues. So a person who truly has Parkinson's disease dementia is going to develop that dementia at a later stage in their Parkinson's disease. So if a person shows signs of dementia within a year of Parkinson's disease, of, of a Parkinson's disease diagnosis, they probably have misdiagnosed and actually have Lewy body dementia. Now let's talk about signs and symptoms. So symptoms of Parkinson's disease are gradual and they're very subtle. And as I said, they're going to begin about 10 years after that person is diagnosed with Parkinson's because of the, they're going to be diagnosed because of the movement issues, not because of the cognitive changes. So when the dementia does begin, um, and again, remember this only happens in you know, one half to about three quarters of people, the person will first have mild cognitive problems mild cognitive problems like changes to their executive function, which means um, their ability to plan and multitask is going to be affected. And what this would look like in a day-to-day -day situation is as a person's beginning to have trouble managing appointments, maybe making decisions, paying their bills, or staying focused during a conversation. As Parkinson's disease dementia progresses, the person's going to begin to have trouble coming up with words, and they're going to have a really hard time understanding complex sentences. Another thing that will happen is the person is going to have extreme symptoms such as REM sleep disorders, and that's when a person physically acts out their dreams or their hallucinations. So people living with Parkinson's disease dementia can become really irritable and agitated and even really aggressive. So in addition to the hallucinations, they can become paranoid or have delusions, and uh, you know, that means they're having um, very strange and unrealistic beliefs. They become very suspicious or they become distrustful. So how is Parkinson's disease different than Alzheimer's? Well, both Parkinson's disease and uh, Parkinson's disease dementia and Alzheimer's disease are two forms of dementia that can impact a person's memory in different ways. 
And Alzheimer's disease typically interferes with the person's ability to create new memories and store information versus a person with Parkinson's dementia may have short and long-term memory loss or forget how to perform even simple tasks like how to run a dishwasher. In Parkinson's, you can learn new things, but it's going to be difficult to retrieve that information. Um, and Parkinson's disease affects people in different ways. So there's really no way to know in advance when someone is diagnosed with Parkinson's if they're going to end up experiencing memory loss or not. So what causes Parkinson's disease dementia? The exact cause of Parkinson's disease dementia is still unknown. Um, experts think it's because there's a protein called alpha synuclein, and it builds up in your brain and it creates these clumps called Lewy bodies and neurons, which are nerve cells, and then those neurons begin to die. The death of those cells usually result in the movement symptoms that are typically associated with Parkinson's, but as the disease progresses, the Lewy bodies eventually damage more of the brain cells and cause problems with memory and thinking. So what treatments are available? Well, there is no cure for this type of dementia or any other type of dementia, but medications are available to help manage the symptoms and improve that person's quality of life. So your provider may start with an anticholinesterase inhibitor to treat the symptoms related to memory, thinking, and judgment, and that because they also support communication between those nerve cells in the brain. And the person may be prescribed a sleep medication to treat you know, an REM sleep disorder and improve overall sleep quality. There are also antipsychotics that can be prescribed to treat hallucinations, but they often make the movement disorders worse. So there's that risk-benefit balance that your provider is going to have to weigh out um, and you um, as a, as a part of the care team. A treatment plan could also include occupational or physical or speech therapy to help that person improve their communication, regulate their sleep schedule, and engage in the things that they want to do every day, like taking a bath or getting dressed. They can help come up with strat strategies for how you adapt doing um, each of those activities. And then other recommendations um, include lifestyle changes such as practicing sleep hygiene, eating a balanced diet, exercising, drinking less alcohol, and all the other things that help boost brain health and overall well being. So, some resources for you um, the Parkinson's Foundation. Um, their website is parkinsons.org. They have a lot of information about understanding Parkinson's disease more. So they do a deeper dive in, into Parkinson's disease. Um, they have strategies for living with the disease, as well as other resources and support if you or a loved one has been diagnosed with Parkinson's and you are experiencing changes in your memory. You can also check out my other episode. Uh, it's titled Dementia 101, and that's where I briefly go over the most common types of dementia. It's also on my website, melissabphd.com, and there you can find a lot more information about how dementia is diagnosed and find other resources, including, coming very soon, the HYSU um, link to that membership library. Thank you for listening today, and I hope this has been helpful information for you. Please don't forget to connect with me by subscribing to this podcast. And you can leave a comment. You can share it with someone else who might find this information beneficial. You can also go to my website, melissabphd.com, and sign up to be part of my newsletter. And you can join my Facebook group, for, which is titled after the podcast, called This is Getting Old, Moving Towards an Age-Friendly World. And I look forward to seeing you there. Until next time.